the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glorify the Lord. That's where the reason what where we are here. Yes. 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 Jesus. We'll ask the Lord to purify our hearts. Mm -hmm. yes. Pure yes. us all. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah.
up our hands and just thank him for who he is. Thank you for his love. Thank you for that name that is above the world. But they use it in sometimes anger, sometimes as a filler. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're upset. Some use it as swearing. Right. But I'm so thankful we know the beauty, right. yet also the power, right. and the authority yes. of the name of the Lord yes. Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. And I'm so thankful one day that name was pronounced over me when I was water baptized yes. in the name yes. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. There is none other name. And I am so thankful. Mm, yes. Maybe you don't think this way, but I've often thought, God, who am I? When mm, I begin to think right. of people in other countries, mm -hmm. I, I was standing at the train station the other day. I think it was in Crewe or Preston. I was going down to see my son and his family in, in Swansea, Wales. And uh, I'm standing there, I'm thinking, oh, God, there's just hundreds of people that's on this platform. And, is there somebody I can talk to? And Lord, these people that need you. And it's like, God, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? But somehow this truth has been revealed. And by your grace, uh, Lord, receiving it. And so every day, every day we need to thank the Lord that we can walk in this truth. And if you are not today, it is for you. And you can come to the saving knowledge of Jesus yes, Christ. Right. Not only a theory, but experience it in reality. Amen. And he's with us every day. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Amen. 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 It is so great. Thank you, Sister Sabrina. I called her last night. She's been after me to come and preach. And uh, I thought they must be for desperate times if they're asking me to come <laughs> over. She's a good teacher, <laughs> preacher, and others. Uh, but thank you for this opportunity and opened up today that I could come and be here. And uh, it's good to see new faces as well. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm going to be careful. Maybe some new faces because you just got older and I think you look. Oh, sorry. Uh, you know, kid, just kidding. Just kidding. I, I, that's all right. It's chill. That's okay. He looks dead serious. Like, I'm crossing the path. Anyway, but it's good to see new ones and some we've known for years has been so faithful to the work of the Lord here and then also to meet brother and sister Anderson today and a uh, great opportunity to meet them welcome to this glorious city of Edinburgh and to the promised land called Scotland and, uh, we just feel bad when people have to travel back to Egypt so, you know, we can't help them we'll pray for you but it's great meeting you folks thank you for coming and, of course, Brother Dylan as well, one of our ministers here in the district. Appreciate him and his ministry as well. Do pray for me. I don't know. Is this online today? Yeah, it will be later. Ooh, I don't know. You have to pray for me because I think I picked up the wrong suit. Some of you know I have problems with colors. I'm partially colorblind. My wife said, you wear this, this, and this. And I don't know if this is the this that went with that. So... But you know what? If that's the biggest problem I have in life today, I am doing good. I want to say also thank you. Many of you may or may not know, but 
Sister Sabrina, as well as pastoring here, and uh, also uh, trying to reach into other areas. She is our administrator for the part-time Bible school, which has really grown incredibly. And uh, not only here in the northern district, but also in the, the Nordic countries. And they're now considering and thinking about it in the Baltic countries where we're at as well. And then also she is the academic dean for the full-time Bible school. And uh, I get these calls occasionally, Brother Kelly, you're going to have to talk to them. So, uh, but she does extremely well. I just want to publicly thank her. So she does a lot. She, she does a lot of ministry in different ways. I want to say thank you. And thank you, Brother Dylan, uh, for supporting her in all of those. And uh, I know you're involved in various areas of ministry as well. Well, we are to bring something to you from the word of the Lord, and I pray by God's grace we can do so. If we stand together, I want to turn, first of all, I didn't give any scriptures. I hope that's all right, because I'm going to kind of go from the King James to maybe New Living Translation a couple times into the NIV, but I will try to move forward. Uh, Matthew chapter 2, reading verses 9 to 12. Matthew chapter 2. Reading verses 9 through 12. When they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. When they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Being warned of God, we often focus on the gifts and however many wise men there were. This is the portion I want to look at today. Being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Thank you, Lord, for today. Another day you've given to us. Another opportunity to gather here today to worship you. Lord, I pray today you'll lead us and guide us. Help us to rightly divide your word. Let it speak into our hearts. You know where all of us are in our walk with you and what it is we need to hear. Lord, help us to be submitted to that, to break the bread of life. Lord, that it may minister where needed. In Jesus' name we pray and let us say amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Simply titling this today, they went home another way. They went home. Another way. Story strikes me. Yes, we think of this when we say the Christmas season, although evident that these appeared later, not with the shepherds and so forth. We'll not get into that, but they, they came. They heard. Right. They saw the star. These were not Jews. These were Gentiles. They were people of the east. And they were following the star that drew them. They began to follow that. Whether curiosity or just something prompted them, but they were following just what they knew. They come to Jerusalem. And of course, Herod asking him, where is he that's born king of the Jews? His take was different. He felt threatened. His empire could be threatened because of another king that was on the scene. And so his plan was not to say, I want to see this king that we can join together. We can make a league or whatever this king may be. He was going the other way because, again, there was fear, trepidation. Because we see he wanted to see this Christ child, as we now say, being destroyed. And this is another point that's always astounding to me, that when they came to the city and asked Herod, he asked the priests and the scribes and people gathering them together, the religious leaders of the day. And he began to ask them where this would take place. And unbelievably, they pointed, of course, to where the prophet said, 
about Bethlehem. And again, this is where he would be born. Now, you would think there would be the curiosity when that would happen. Hey, this could be the time. This could be the situation because these guys came from the east. And King Herod is asking us where it's spoken about in the scripture. And so they even supplied the information. They were able to give them the guidance of where they needed to go to Bethlehem. But the astounding thing is they did not go. Yeah, the wise men that came on the scene, they themselves went. Herod had another vested interest. But you would think those of the religious leaders of the day, something would have struck their heart, some chord in their heart, in their mind. Uh -huh. You know, let's just go and see. If it is, it is. If it isn't, it isn't. Uh -huh. But they didn't go. So it is today in our world that we call Christendom or Christianity that we see oftentimes in teaching whole Bible studies when we've come to certain parts, maybe the conclusion of the tabernacle or getting into the New Testament and when it comes to water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ or the oneness of God. And well, are you the only ones that teach this? And we begin to show, of course, in the Word and even using their Bible, it's in the Bible. But oftentimes we've been asked, well, why doesn't my church teach us? Well, what about the other religious leaders? What about the theologians? And if this is right, why don't they? I just tell them, you need to go ask them. Don't ask me. Because this is the word of the Lord. It's not setting in judgment. It's making people aware. Who knows? Can I just simply say, who knows that who God has tried to reveal this truth to, but maybe in a closed mind, a closed way, they were not receptive to it, but God is revealing it to you and to I. And there are others like these wise men that are just doing what they know to do, following something. Right. And I believe in this hour, we talk about a Peter and a Cornelius situation yes. as we read in the book of Acts. Could it be that the Lord wants us to encounter the three wise men? Now, if you always wanted to be a star, you can be a star and shine for Jesus Christ. <laughs> and on the job, in the market, when you're walking down Tesco, when you're walking through the castle, maybe, wherever it may be, you can shine as a star that they can see. Hey, Amen. what is it? Right. Well, I'm not preaching on that today, but anyway. But anyway, they went, and as they were on their journey, as they were on their journey down the sea, and of course seeing him, as they departed, they were going back to their own country. Now here's another thing. God does speak to people that don't have a clue with everything yet. I am praying, Holy Ghost, you begin to speak yes. to people's lives today. Because they went back. They didn't question. They didn't say, give me chapter and verse. Let's have that one more time, God. So I, I'm really sure that's what you want. These men, when they saw and had a dream, the angel of the Lord warning them, they followed the direction of God. God, give me a heart that when you speak to me, I don't need it three times. I don't need it four times. I need to be like a Noah. I need to be like a kid of not only Noah, but Abraham. I need to be like these wise men. God, you don't need to repeat and repeat and repeat. God, I want to have a heart that is willing when I know it's your word. And I hear, I want to say, thus saith the Lord. Sometimes we want the experience over and over and over and over again. And that's why we never get past that point. God wants us to get past that point. He wants us to have a heart of obedience. You see, when you learn obedience, some people want to be used in the gifts of the Spirit and the dynamic and the powerful, but they have a hard time just following the, oh Lord, just show me one more time in your word. Just, just show me. And I believe of having confidence in the word, but when God's having to be repetitive again and again, when we know a lifestyle that needs to change, an attitude that needs to change, following the plan of salvation, when God is having to be repetitive and repetitive, how can God use us out in the gifts of the Spirit when we won't obey what we know? Right. It develops a sensitivity. It develops that obedience that we can respond when God wants to use us yes. in this area. They went home another way. They went home another way. They saw the Christ child, and they were never, never going to be the same. When Jesus comes along our way, or we've experienced Him in some way, shape, or form, we're never going to go home the same way. I like what it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in, say in. Amen. 
in Christ. Not knowing, not just rushing up against Jesus, not just having those Jesus goosebump moments, uh, but if any man be in Christ Jesus. Uh, I like the teaching in John where he talks about he's the vine and I'm the branch. Uh, I don't invite Jesus into my world. I got in. I get in to the vine. I'm not the vine. He's the vine. I'm the branch. I got to get in. Amen. Some people want to add. They want Jesus to be an addendum to their life. Jesus, you come with me. Jesus, this is what I want. Jesus, this is where I want to go. He's not asking that. He's saying, I want you to go where I want you to go. I need to get in Jesus. You ever see those great big bubbles? They kind of come around the holiday season at the, at the Christmas markets. And you probably never go to Christmas markets, but anyway, it's okay. But you go to the Christmas markets, they got these bubbles you get in, and it's a Christmas scene. Sometimes, when I've looked at those, I kind of think that's the way it needs to be with Jesus. I just step into a whole new world. <laughs> if any man be in Christ, Jesus, old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. It's like the man that was born blind in John 9, 25. The NIV simply says, he replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. But one thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Yes. In John 9, when that young man who was born blind, he met Jesus. He didn't know a whole lot about him. And when they begin to question him, all he could say is, I can't tell you a lot about him, but one thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. Yes. When the pressure was on, he stood to what he knew. When the pressure is on, we've got to stand. When he went home, he went home another way. When those wise men went home, they went another way. When that blind man was touched by Jesus, he went back another way. You see, when Jesus touches us, I don't want to go back to what he brought me from. I want to walk the new one. I want to talk the new talk. Oh, hallelujah. When we come into the presence of the Lord, we will never be the same. Never. Even if you leave today and you're not a believer, you leave today. Well, I, I can't. That old guy's nutter. He's nuts. He's just yelling and shouting and screaming up there. I've try, I tried to tone it down, folks. I've tried to be like I've been around some folks. It just, and the Lord said, and it's powerful and it's anointed. And I'm thinking, God, why can't I just turn it down about three, three levels, you know? Not. But I like, it's just like fire sometimes shut up in your bones. Or like the children used to sing, it's bubbling, it's bubbling, it's bubbling. It, oh, okay. Anyway, get back on my text. I'm not even off of point one, and I will respect your time today. Again, when he met him, he was never the same. Mark 140. Let's move on. Mark 140. As a man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees, he said, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Right. Notice the approach of this man. Now we look to the one that was a leper. When he came to Jesus, he worshipped Jesus. There was a sense of humility. Right. There was a need that he knew he had within his life. Right. He was a leper. And he knew he needed the touch of Jesus. And the door of opportunity came. And he said he begged him on his knees. If you are willing, you can make me clean. It's when I first come to the Lord. It's that sense of knowing I need yes. Jesus. Yes. He's not an option. I've got to have Jesus before I have my lunch today. I've got to have the Lord before this. I've got to have Jesus above everything else. I want Jesus more than anything else. This man knew he needed a touch from Jesus. And he came because he was leprous. Thank you, Jesus. But when he came unto Jesus and he humbled himself, it was Jesus that was going to touch and bring the healing. Tells us Jesus was moved with compassion. Aren't you so thankful that Jesus doesn't sit in judgment? And I'll fix you. I'll take care of you. But you got yourself in this fix. Aren't you glad we don't have to go through all of that? But when I come to the Lord in my brokenness and in my sin. Here it said he was moved with compassion. He put forth his hand and touched him and saith unto him. I will be thou clean. As soon as he had spoken immediately, the leprosy departed from him and he was cleansed. 
Maybe you have visited somewhere in the world, or maybe you live somewhere in the world where leprosy it really rings a bell with you. But here in the West, we don't go by and see leper colonies. Here in the West, we don't even find it. There's a, there's a ward in a hospital that's just strictly for people that have leprosy, and you cannot go in that ward. You have to be, they have to be isolated. Nobody can really have contact with them unless they have isolation gear put upon them. But when this man was lepers came face to face with Jesus. Just one touch of the master's hand changed his life forever. Can you imagine the joy that day? Okay. I tell sometimes people when I'm preaching, if it really didn't happen that way, just stay faithful. And when you get to heaven and just say, you know, there was a guy by the name of Kelly that preached uh, on Sunday the 19th of November. I'm just not sure what he said. Did it really happen that way, Jesus? You can find out. But I just let me use my imagination, all right? Because a lot of you use your imagination already. Well, how long is he going to preach forever? He's a anyway. Um, can you imagine the joy of that guy going home that day? Because he was going to go back another way. He was not going to go back to the leper colony. True. He had to go show himself to the priest and, and that process because that's the way it was then. But can you imagine him going back to be with his family? Maybe he had a wife. Maybe he had children. He had been separated them since lepros from them since leprosy. Again, they, would, they could get food to him and maybe set it on one side of the road and they were on the other side of the road. But now there would be a closeness, an intimacy with the family once again. As he had to declare by law, by the religious law that day and so forth, I am unclean, stay away. No longer would that be the verbiage that he would come forth from his lips. But now he could be close to his children as a father. He could be close to his wife as a husband. But that morning... Everything would change because of the touch of the master's hand. You see, it's you and I. When I come to Jesus in a leprous condition spiritually, sin within my life, I can come as a sinner, but I can leave as one made whole in Christ as I repent, as I'm water baptized and filled with the Spirit. No longer unclean, but I can be clean in Jesus Christ. The stain of leprosy and sin within my life is gone. God. Oh, hallelujah. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory when we realize where he brought us from and where he's taken us to. He's not taking me to a Disney world. He's not taking me to a holiday spot that I might like. But oh, I have a hope of living with him eternally. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Coming to the Lord. He came one way as a leper, but he was going to go back. Hallelujah. A man that was whole, a man that had healing, a man that was restored. Yes, Jesus. But also there was someone else that came to the Lord. It was a demoniac. We read in Luke chapter 8, verse 29 in the NIV, Jesus commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man. Many times it seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demons in a solitary place. Jesus arrived on the shore. You can read the story. It talks about as a, the man came out, he'd come to torment me, and the, the spirits cried out that Jesus was on the scene. Can I tell you, somebody being tormented by demonic spirits, Jesus can deliver. He can set free. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. He can deliver. And do not be surprised. Do not be surprised because of the spirits that's being entertained in our world today. Coming across movies and singing and all that's taking place in our world. People being open to things they're not even aware of. And becoming open to that. And when they encounter the presence of the Lord, there is a reaction. Right. Oftentimes people say, well, you've got to find, is anybody here possessed of a spirit? Well, I'll tell you this. If you get Jesus around, you don't have to ask. That's right. Jesus didn't have to step on and say, okay, who's here in the graveyard that's got a devil in him? The guy just came. What am I saying? Sometimes people want to play around like, now who's here got a spirit so we can cast out? You just get Jesus in the midst. Right. And if there is, it'll begin to manifest itself. But there's a message of hope. Right. Because when those spirits came, again, in, the, in that man, and they, they begin to, to manifest that to a certain degree, Jesus just spoke 
the word. Right. And the man was delivered of the yes. devils that he was possessed with. Yes. Jesus did the miraculous. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. He not only heals those that were leprous, those in sin, and also even sick in body. But when we are troubled with spirits, can I say that there are those that get baptized, get full of the Holy Ghost, but the devil wants to oppress. Now, I don't want to mess up your theology today, but if I do, just get over it. Okay? Because there's some people that will tell you, you can have the Holy Ghost and you can have a devil in you. You got to have one or the other. Okay, all right. I won't, okay. <laughs> now, the spirit, spirits will oppress. Mm -hmm. Spirits will torment. Mm -hmm. But if we have the spirit of Christ in us, right. we're his son, his daughter. Mm -hmm. But can I say, sometimes we get in the world and we get connected with stuff, again, that begins to oppress us. We begin to entertain things that are not right as believers. And they begin to come against us. And some people say, well, they're possessed. No, you're entertaining things. And there's an oppressiveness that's coming against you. You can be set free from that as well. Two things. One, as we pray. And two, stop it. It's kind of like, you know, thank God I take a shower every day. My wife is really thankful. Okay. But there have been occasions, maybe being somewhere I've been able to take a shower, maybe my plane got delayed two or three days, and I'm not really into washing clothes out in the sink. So anyway, but if I had to put those clothes back on again, come on, Brother G, but you know, you have to clean up, and you got to put back on the dirty clothes, you're clean physically, but you put back on the dirty clothes, and maybe you do that all week. I mean, my son, when he was in Bible school, he said he learned how to wash clothes Maybe once a month or something. I said, what? He said, yeah, you wear them inside out. Wear them inside out. You I said, you didn't. I said, your mother taught you better. <laughs> You're laughing because you probably did. <laughs> well, if I kept going back, take a shower today, I put those old clothes back on, I take another shower today. Now, I can start spraying everything on me that I want, deodorant and everything else, but I'm going to start stinking too. And it's not just because of me, but it's what I'm wearing. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. It's what I go back to and put on. Uh -huh. Sometimes we come to church on Sunday and we get a word and we feel the presence of God and they're free. But we go back on Monday and step right back into some things we know we shouldn't be doing. Because it's appealing to the flesh. And before we know it, we're back there again. we got to come back. What I'm telling you, just leave that stuff behind. Yes. What would you think if you were there the day that Lazarus was raised from the dead? Came out, said, Lazarus, come forth, all that business. And then he looked at the crowd and said, loosen. They began to loosen. I would think they had to have a garment because they couldn't loosen too much. But, you know, they probably had a garment. They could put, aren't you glad when the Lord looses us, he clothes us in righteousness and his goodness? What would you think if you were there that day? They're loosening Lazarus. He said, here, give me that gauze down there. And he begins to pick up all those rags they were taking off of him. He's like, Lazarus, get a grip, son. You're healed. You're out of here. You don't need that anymore. Right. He didn't. But sometimes as believers, what God delivers us from, we want to pick up again. I really like that. That's good. And we walk around with stinky, smelly, decaying stuff upon us. But you can be delivered from that desire. You can be set free. Again, as I pray, as I read the word of the Lord, and my life is transformed. And the things oppressive come against me. I can come to the house of the Lord, and I can be touched. If we're here today, God can touch Jesus. Touch this man. The demoniac. Can he can make us whole. Can you say amen? amen. amen. Our world is, is hitting. It's, it's, it's very true. Our, our world is hit today with a lot of mental pressure upon individuals that's coming our way. And Jesus can touch our mind. And the enemy wants to come against our minds at times as well. But we need to pray. Paul said, whatsoever things are good, pure. And he begins to go down a list of things. He said, think on these things. But there's so much news, so much junk that's thrown our way. And so many things are distorted. I don't want to go there. Anyway, so distorted. That's why we need the word, the word, yes, the word yes, every day, yes, every day, every day. Yes, I gotta pull, I gotta get the word inside of me. I got to read the word. I've got to stop and take time to do that. The man was delivered, he was healed. 
Jesus spoke the word and he was delivered. Amen. Even says in Luke 8.35, then the people went out to see what happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man with whom had the demons gone out, sitting at the feet of Jesus, dressed. I find that interesting. Dressed. Mm -hmm. Jesus helps us to put clothes on, not take them off. Amen. We could stop here just for a little while, but I'm not pastoring. <laughs> Dressed in Indy's right mind. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. He was dressed in Indy's right mind. And it shook up the people so much that they wanted him to leave. But Jesus said, no, you stay here and tell of the things that's happened to us. I like what Paul says in 2 Timothy 1, 7, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of right. love and of a sound mind. Amen. If we're struggling, and, and let me just say this, and I want to say this very carefully. You see, probably 10 years ago, the mantra was, I'm depressed. Now, there is real depression. There's clinical depression. There's, there's a, I, I don't understand it all, but I know there, there's reality. I've been around people that have been severely depressed. But you know what? It became such a cliche. I didn't get my hair parted right. I'm so <laughs> depressed. I couldn't buy the shoes I wanted. I'm so depressed. And I told some people, you better stop that. Because mm -hmm. if you knew what it was like to really be depressed, you would not even entertain that word. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't entertain it. Because there are some people that really battle it. And even sometimes believers that battle that as well. But they, they're, they're in the presence. They get into the presence of the Lord. And also there are those who talk to them and help them and counsel them. I know it's there. There is a reality of that. Yes. We don't just say it never happens. It does happen. Yes. And God helps us. Right. I had a brother-in-law that walked through a very dark time. He was a professional, but something an injury at his work. And it was, it was amazing how it really had an effect upon him mentally and he was a believer he went to church he was a great man but well, he was going to a counselor he, this, this man was not apostolic but he had a faith in God and he was good and and after a while my brother-in-law's name was Paul and he said Paul he said he said you read the word he said yes every day I'm reading the word he said do you read it out loud and he went no was, duh I read the word he said this is what I want you to do he said when you're home you know, we feel, isn't it kind of weird we feel strange reading the Bible out loud? Okay. You feel uncomfortable? But he said, when you're home and on your own, he said, when you're reading the Word, don't just read it and take it in your mind. I want you to read that Word. I want you to speak that Word. He said, there's something powerful in the Word. Now, this, is, this is a man that was a oneness. I don't even know if God had the Holy Ghost. But he had an understanding of the word. And he said, you sit there and you read that word out loud. Because faith cometh by hearing. And he said, when you speak the word out, it's powerful. Okay? And he said, what a difference. Yes, he still read the word at times quietly. But he would read that word out just in his normal voice. And the faith and how it really helped him. This book is powerful. That's why the enemy tries to get us away from the book. That's why the enemy got too busy to read the word. That's why the enemy was, I don't understand it. God can help us. We need the word every day. The word every day. It will help us to battle some of this stuff. It will help us to have the victory over some things. i got to hurry up. This man went home a different way. He came out of the tombs. Sorry. <laughs> but he was later in his right mind and clothed, mm -hmm. talking to Jesus. Mm -hmm. It freaked him out. Mm -hmm. Did I turn it off? No. Maybe I, I see at home what they do, and they give me a microphone that's got one bar. That's all I'm allowed. <laughs> all right, one bar. I am burying, really. But isn't it exciting what Jesus does in our lives? Sometimes we just we kind of we just forget. When, when I look back and see where he brought me right, from. Right. A mighty long way. Yes. When you even begin to ponder, God, where would I be? Right. There's a song. Where would I be if Jesus 
didn't find me or something. I had an outdoor crouch, I think, yeah. sang that song. Where would I be? And who would I be? And, and the song goes on. Aren't you thankful that Jesus, uh, even, even some of us may have been acting like a maniac that was demonic. Jesus said, that's not a problem. If you're hungry, just come unto me. And when that demonic man came, Jesus touched him. Set him free. And he went home another way. Right. One more. Right. One more. John 8, verse 3 to 6 out of the ESV. Scribes and Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery. Placing her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. And in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? He said, they said this to test him, that he might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. Now, a lot of preaching talk about what did he write, you really don't know. But let's just don't miss the point. A lady being brought unto the Lord, she was dragged to Jesus. By her accuser, she was caught in adultery. You see, the goal of a godly person is never to see someone fall fail or sin is to help lift them up. These men were acting more like devils and religious leaders. Their first goal was to tempt. Their second goal was to accuse. They were acting like really the enemies of our soul. Revelation 12.10 For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. The enemy wants to accuse us. Right. Always remember when the enemy of your soul wants to accuse you of your past sins, mm -hmm. you just need to say this, the blood mm -hmm. of Jesus. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. yes. It freaks him out. Mm -hmm. It's under the blood. Right. What right. you did, it's under mm -hmm. the blood. Yeah. It's under the blood, the precious blood. We don't sing a lot about the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. At home, I tell them that. I'm not a songwriter, and they don't let me loose in the pulpit with singing. If we won't sing the newfangled stuff, you know, whatever. It's good. It's good. It was good for Paul and Silas, so it's good for us today. You know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we don't. The blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. I know it was blood. I know it was. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. When the enemy of your soul, he wants to come back and call some things of the past to your mind that's under the blood to torment you and I. Instead of us freaking out at that moment, why is he doing that? Because he knows I'm going in the right direction. Sometimes, why is the enemy coming against me? What am I doing wrong? It may not be what you're doing wrong, but it's what you're doing right. Yes. You see, the bully won't come against you unless he feels intimidated. When the enemy of your soul and my soul sees how we're progressing, he begins to attack and accuse and come against us. Don't feed into that narrative. Don't listen to that verbiage that's not of God. Begin to realize, why is he doing that? It's simply because God is working in me. God is taking me in the right direction. I am progressing. I'm headed in the right way. And a lot of times people focus, well, the devil's after me and this and that and all. We focus on that. We need to focus on the blood, the name. And thank you, Jesus, you brought me out. He's trying to tell me it's still there, but it's under the blood. Jesus, I thank you for delivering me from that. He wants to torment us. He wants to torment you. And what your life was, especially if you're a believer in Jesus Christ and now it's under the blood, your past behavior, you need to say, I experience forgiveness. You see, experiencing forgiveness is something he can't experience. Right. Yes. Yeah. He can't. Sin once, done. I've lost count of my times. Yeah. And you have too. Thank you, Sister Sweet. <laughs> okay. You see, that woman came into the presence of the one that the wise men went to worship. John 8, verse 6. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger. As they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. Once more he bent down and wrote on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the older one. Stoning was it. That was a, you know, that's pretty rough. Now, I don't know. I've never been in the stoning. I've got to remember the scripture where I'm leaving off there. But I've read. I've never been on the scene where somebody is stoned. 
and I've read and heard that when someone was stoned, they didn't try to pick up the biggest stone to hit you in the head so you die quick. Mm -hmm. The meanness of man would be, and we're seeing the meanness of man today in our world. Mm -hmm. The meanness of man would be, we're going to start and we can inflict the most pain mm -hmm. that you have to endure. Mm -hmm. And finally, your life may ebb out of you. Mm -hmm. Whether it's true or not, so maybe I shouldn't even say it across the pulpit, but I've been told when they would stone somebody, they would try to start with the feet working up first. Because that way your head or vital organs would not be damaged at first. Much pain would be inflicted upon you. That's what they wanted to do to this lady. Again, when he heard this, he went one by one, beginning with the older ones, and Jesus left, was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus stood and said, Oh, woman, where are thine accusers? Has no one condemned you? She said, No, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. And not only that way, but he said, Go and sin. No more. Amen. Wow. You can't read about adultery and sin. We need to be so careful that we don't focus on a lot of the other stuff that we forget about fornication and adultery. That's sin too. Yes, it is. Sometimes we think we've progressed to worse. Well, this is sin as well down here. Yes, it is. He said, go thy way and sin no more. She came to Jesus. Not really by choice. They, they brought her. Put her down. And to condemn her. Mm -hmm. When they left, he said, where are thy accusers? God. Mm -hmm. And he simply said, go thy way and sin no more. When she left that way, left that day, she was a different person. Amen. You see, when you come to Jesus, you're going to leave a different way. Yes. Yes. The wise men, the lepers, the demoniac. Mm -hmm. And this lady caught in adultery as we stand together. Mm -hmm. I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. See, the enemy is only out to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm -hmm. And that's why even when we come to the Lord, there is a resistance there. When we feel the call to repent, and today if you're here, one has never really repented. One that acknowledges, I need the Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm going to turn from that and turn to the Lord. Right. The enemy of our soul is going to fight against that. Right. Because he doesn't want to lose the grip. Because he knows he can because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And not only that, if you've never been baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. Or if you've never received the Holy Ghost, God can fill you with the Holy Ghost today. Maybe you're battling something today in your mind and spirit. You can leave here today different than when you came in. We're going to leave different one way or another because gathering here today, we've all gotten older. But we can leave as new creatures and strengthen believers in the Lord. The enemy coming against it. Brother Jeeva, you want to lead us in a course here today if somebody can help you i i don't know how you do at the end of the service but i feel this area is opening maybe you want to come today for prayer maybe there's some things you're battling maybe the enemy has been accusing you maybe there's there's something you're facing maybe you've just never really turned your heart to the lord today and god is wanting you just to open up and let him come in whatever it may be if you want to come up here today